Hello, 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 everyone. I think we're live. I don't know how to do this because I never get to touch the controls, but here we are. Hello, everyone. <laughs> hello. Hello. Oh, and I now see with a little delay, I'm also looking at the screen on YouTube and we're actually there. So I was very awkwardly looking in the camera for a little bit, but here we are. Great. <laughs> um, let me pause this one so I don't get confused. I'm just having this one up for the chat messages. Great. So to start off, um, there's two people missing. Um, Andre had to cancel last minute. Um, very sorry about that. And uh, Brandon is enjoying a well-deserved vacation. So um, yeah, it's it's just us. But uh, you know, we know a thing or two about this as well. Um, so how's everyone doing, Pedro? Pedro, what's going on in Brazil? What are you doing? Hello, guys. Yeah, I'm just crashing some code here, mobile development, uh, and it's very uh, hot today. It's Oh, really? It's, um, moving far away from the winter. So you, actually, the start of the spring, spring is, yeah. yeah. That's it. All right. <laughs> All right. Great, great, great. Javier, what have you been up to working on .NET MAUI? Yeah, well, keep pushing with MAUI. I'm really excited about the coming stuff in the toolkit. And we're, you know, here in Spain, mostly in the south of Spain, as, as always in summer, are uh, very sunny day so well now now we are in the night so yep yep same here <laughs> but uh all right all right great um, so i see a lot of here. people yay are joining us from the us here from memphis tennessee i've been there once which was really great um albany new york welcome welcome rosario argentina i've been there too oh my gosh argentina. i've been around yeah 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 argentina is close to you pedro um, yes, yeah. close. close. <laughs> <laughs> um, and here in Louisiana, so a lot of people in the US. This seems a great time slot for the US, so that's good. All right, so we have a couple of things for you today. Um, I, we have, if you have been following us on Twitter, uh, then you might have no, or you know, we've put it everywhere. So there's blog posts, I will walk you through that in a little bit um, about the pre-releases that we have done because we have a pre-release for the Xamarin Community Toolkit MAUI Compat package. Um, we've done a pre-release for the actual .NET MAUI native package. Um, and, you know, uh, let me just talk you through how what it is exactly first, how to set it up um, um, secondly, and uh, from there, we'll see where we end up. Um, so, yeah, and I think Pedro has... Um, something to share about migrating an app from Xamarin Forms to .NET MAUI already. Um, so that's that's great. We can yep. learn from that. Um, hopefully, we can highlight some MAUI toolkit issues and PRs um, that are out there. Um, Javier has been working on some stuff, porting it over to um, um, the toolkits as well. And of course, you know, um, we have some dedicated time at the end for questions and answers, but feel free to um, uh, put your questions in the chat. I'll try to keep an eye on that as well. And we can um, answer some questions during the hour as well. So really great. Well, wh while I'm talking, let me just share my screen. Um, I was already doing that. Let's see how I can still do that without losing everyone. There we go. Um, so here we have the first blog post. Um, and uh, this is the uh, Maui compatibility package. Um, so what are the different versions? We have the Xamarin Community Toolkit MAUI Compat Package, which is everything that is in the Xamarin Community Toolkit today, but now it's compatible with .NET MAUI. So um, I think we've talked about it a little bit last time um, that if you want to, you can use your custom renderers and that kind of stuff by enabling the kind of compatibility layer that is inside of .NET MAUI. Um, so you can reuse a lot of stuff, which will give you a little bit more time to transition to a .NET MAUI app while not having to rewrite all the things immediately. Um, and the same goes for um, the .NET, uh, no, the Xamarin Community Toolkit. Um, um, and we have now made that compatible with .NET MAUI. So everything is in this blog post. Actually, let's put this in the chat here right now so you can um, go there a little bit more easily. I hope it turns into a link or else you can copy and paste it. Um, but this describes basically everything. So of course we have the markup package as well. I will get to that in a little bit. Um, but you can find this on NuGet today. Uh, we silently, secretly released it 
um, and then wrote the blog post about it. Uh, but what we've been doing here is kind of really, really cool because not only are we um, um, turning this library into a .NET MAUI compatible compatible version, uh, but we're also kind of documenting the steps that we're taking here so that if you are a library maintainer, then you can also see what we're doing and hopefully you can figure out for yourself how you can make your library compatible with um, with um, uh, .NET MAUI as well. I'm thinking here, I pasted a link with my personal account. That's probably going to be deleted by YouTube. So let me try again with this one. And hopefully the link should pop up. There we go. That's better. Um, so that is kind of like what the, the Maui Compat package is. And here we have a little table with what's going on. So we have the Xamarin Community Toolkit, which uh, depends on Xamarin Forms, uh, which has all kinds of custom renderers. And it has these targets and it supports these platforms. Um, now we have the, it's, it's also called like this, Xamarin Community Toolkit Maui Compat, um, which now has a dependency on .NET Maui. Um, it still uses the renderers, but the target is .NET 6. And um, right now, for this first preview, we are supporting iOS and Android, uh, but it will support the same targets as .NET Maui. So we got a couple of questions about that already. Um, but Windows is coming, and macOS is coming as well. The kind of the extra challenge we have here with um, um, these platforms is that Windows is not just UWP anymore, but it's now going to be WinUI. And macOS is not just going to be macOS, but it's going to be Mac Catalyst. So um, I think, you know, we can we can just use it, but we just didn't have, find the time to um, implement those yet. So we had to make choices and we focused on iOS and Android first um, so that you can start using this and start digging into it. But no worries, we'll add the rest later. Um, then the Xamarin Community Toolkit markup. Um, um, okay, so this is the current version as well. Uh, Xamarin Forms, custom renderers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Actually, custom renderers. I kind of wonder about that because I don't think there's any renderers involved here uh, because it all uses like the not the, the markup. The... No, right? So it uses. Yeah, it, it's ahead. all use cross-platform code, but yeah, it, it's it's fine to explain what's happening here, right? Because. If anyone is asking about what's happening here, what's the difference between this Maui Compat and the future coming .NET Maui Community Toolkit? Well, this is more for people that are starting thinking or are in the step to, to migrate their Xamarin Forms application to .NET Maui. And this library is used to give access to all the Xamarin Forms Toolkit functionality from, from the beginning, as Gerald said, for now in Android and iOS. Of course, we plan for, for support for Windows and Mac too. But uh, all this stuff is using all the compatibility pack that is included in .NET MAUI. So we are reusing all the custom renderers. We are reusing all the code from uh, the Xamarin Community Toolkit use recompiling everything with uh, .NET 6 and using uh, .NET MAU in space, etc. But um, the idea with the upcoming uh, .NET MAU community toolkit is, of course, if we, for example, uh, migrate everything from Xamarin to MAUI related, for example, with the media element control, we will port and adapt the custom render to a custom handler to use you know the new architecture and have the benefits in the extensibility performance etc related with the new uh, architecture so that's are mostly the, the main difference between uh, this maui compact package and the upcoming uh, .NET maui community toolkit all right awesome thank you javier um, so yeah, for the for the markup, you know, there it just uses kind of like the Xamarin Forms elements and now the .NET MAUI elements as well. Um, so there's not really custom renders involved here. Um, same here, we have targeted iOS and Android. I guess for this one, um, we could have targeted Windows and macOS immediately. I don't know why that didn't happen. Um, if we if Brandon was here, we could ask him. He is Mr. Markup, but uh, um, it will come fast enough. So. Um, Definitely that will be supported as well. And here, I think this is kind of what Javier just explained, like, hey, when should you use the Maui Compat version and when should you use um, like the, the, the community toolkit.maui? 
Um, and that's more explained here with a couple of links and, and whatnot. So um, go read this for yourself. I've put the link in the chat right here. And here is a little bit about using it. Actually, I'm going to just jump into a demo right now and, and show you this a little bit as well to get you started. Um, I see there is a couple of questions. What yeah. kinds of controls are going to be implemented as well? Oh, let me put this on screen. There we go. Um, Javier, you want to say something about this? Yeah, I just will, will, uh, was uh, reading the, the same question. So, yeah, the question is, is pretty nice. And the answer is uh, quickly is yes. We plan to port all the controls that already are uh, and exist in the Maui Community Toolkit to the Shaman Community Toolkit to the Maui Community Toolkit. And of course, in the process, we want also to do some uh, important changes, for example, adapt the custom renderers to handlers. And of course, I think that we want to use the, the community toolkit as a good place to good practice, right? So in the process of porting all this code, that comments and reuse all these, for example, media element uh, handlers to showcase and use also with the documentation and, you know, allow you to, to learn and also adapt uh, um, and learn how, how to port and adapt your code between uh, Shaman Informs and .NET Maui. But the plan is port mostly everything. Will be some parts that already exist in the Shaman Community Toolkit that uh, we probably will not port, or we need to decide how will this evolve. Because, for example, uh, to put a basic example, we have a Shadow API already in Shaman in, in .NET Maui. So you know the the effects related with that that already sees in uh, the Shamarin community toolkit probably will not have sense. So we are not going to port probably every everything, only things that uh, give value and have sense. But that's the idea, port mostly everything to uh, the new toolkit, but adapting and doing good practices and improving everything as much as possible. Yeah, exactly. And I actually got this question a couple of times um, already. So actually, let's just before I go to the demo for the, the compat package, let's park that for a little bit and jump into the kind of native .NET um, uh, Maui community toolkit. Um, because we've released a pre-release of this as well. Um, but that is mostly right now behaviors and converters. We have one extension and one view. Actually, I'm not sharing my screen, so I'm talking to no one here. There we go. Um, so we've, we've got this uh, implemented right now. And um, the kind of extra challenge that we have with the new Maui native toolkit is um, that now we are working together with the Windows Community Toolkit, um, and they have an entire MVVM library. Um, so you know we are going to have to look for like the observable object, and I don't know. We had a kind of a couple of these collection, these helpers in there, which are really nice, uh, but they don't really have a place maybe inside of the Maui toolkit directly. So maybe we're going to move that into that MVVM package, um, or at least you know in some common package where we could share the code. But there's a couple of things that we need to figure out there. And like Javier said as well, um, you know, Don and Maui is going to have better support for shadows, and we have something with shadows in the toolkit that we don't, you know, we don't want to have all these duplicate things everywhere. That's kind of what we want to do with this package. So, um, you know, for the .NET Maui Community Toolkit, we have some bits to figure out uh, before we just copy them over one on one. That's not something that we're going to do. Uh, so things will change, but of course, the end goal is to not take anything away from you that you have right now. Uh, but there will be some way that you can um, reuse whatever there's in there today. Um, so I was talking about the other blog post while I wasn't sharing my screen. Um, that is this one, which describes more of um, how the um, yeah, I've been referring to it as the .NET Maui Community Toolkit, just to make clear which one we're um, actually talking about here, because there is a couple of variations here. Um, so this one is out on NuGet right now as well. Um, here is what to expect. I already showed you that. Uh, and also the same thing here, the markup is um, the markup package is not going anywhere. Um, it has moved into a separate repository. Uh, so if we... I think it's this one, Maui.markup, there we go. Um, it has moved to a separate 
um, repository uh, because right now we were releasing kind of the markup and the toolkit uh, side by side, but the markup didn't really have any development for a while, but new versions were coming out. So that's kind of confusing. Um, so now it's in a separate repository and it can separately be released and do all kinds of cool things. Um, but it's definitely still here and all the features that you love today will be in there for the .NET MAUI community toolkit as well. Um, so there is that. Um, there's a couple of examples here. Docs also in getting started, which is, you know, basically however you would use any other NuGet or how you would use the toolkit today. Um, I think we don't have support for um, the kind of fancy URL namespace thing. To be very honest, I, I didn't talk about this with um, um, all the other people on here. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to do it. I'm not sure. I, I think it's still supported. I'm going to assume that. Um, but I think it also brought some problems with um, giving weird errors in the tooling. So maybe we should see if we could get that fixed first before we reintroduce that. But that's something that we maybe need to talk about offline first. Um, actually, since you're watching, are you using, are you even know what I'm talking about? So we have this like XML NS um, and then you would give it the name. So XCT and then we have HTTPS, blah, 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 something with toolkit in it. And that uh, allows you to import all the namespaces at once instead of having to do all the namespaces separately like this. Um, so are you, if you're watching this video right now and you're in the chat, uh, please let us know if you're actually using that. That can give us some information if we should actually bring it back for the .NET MAUI toolkit as well. Um, here we have a little bit about the schedule, uh, which is pretty tight. So uh, we're going to um, have some more pre-releases in here. Um, and then, um, um, yeah, we're going to release that at kind of like the same schedule that Forms is following and um, um, .NET MAUI as well. So I promised you a little demo. So let's just see if we can do that. Um, going back to the MAUI Compat package. Let me just copy this name right here. I'm going to switch over to my Windows machine like it's magic. So boom, here we are. Oh, it's a long screen. That's too bad. Uh, there we go. And I'm here on Windows 11, all the new bits, Windows 11, Visual Studio 2022. Um, this is a physical um, Samsung device that I got lying around here. and. Um, I've mirrored that with the Your Phone app, which is in Windows. Um, and actually, this is like the, the, the file new .NET MAUI application. Um, I didn't really prepare this demo, so things might definitely break, also because I'm installing new preview bits every day. So you never know what's going to happen. Um, so forgive me if that happens. But what we can do now is go over here to our Solution Explorer. Um, right click on the Maui app. This is just, I had, this is a sneak preview right here. I have the new templates where the WinUI one is disappeared as well. So that's really great. Um, well, and also there are other few chains. For example, some people will, will remember from, from previous .NET Maui previews that uh, we use it something like a startup class where they have a configure method, you know, where receive the, the application host builder, that is where you can you know, register your services, fonts, or whatever you want. So the have changed a little bit, but uh, so we are breaking a little bit from the previews, but this for a very good reason, and it's because we are now totally aligned with other Microsoft frameworks, like for example, ASP.NET. Now we are using exactly the same way to create applications, to register, you know, the services, et cetera. We are using the same naming and everything in the same way to allow you to, if, in case you have the knowledge uh, or have used uh, in ASP.NET this before, you already know how to use that in .NET MAUI. Or if you register your service in some way in your uh, ASP.NET application, you already know how to register your service here in .NET MAUI because it's exactly the same. So now we have this uh, program concept that is mostly the same that probably you have seen if you know SP.NET. And if not, it's just, yeah, the startup point of the application and where we create the MAUI application. And now uh, we not receive the builder via parameter. We can get it with this MAUI application, create builder. And the same is, is the rest is the same. So yeah, use these small notes about uh, upcoming or new .NET MAUI stuff, but uh, it's not huge change, but uh, again, it's for a good reason.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see already people in the chat. I like this consistency, so that's great. Um, and I think that's really important, right? Because we're going back to 1.NET, .NET 6, uh, the same thing for everything. So if you're now used to ASP.NET, but maybe not mobile development, then now you suddenly know how to work with all these things because it's exactly the same. And that's what's really, really cool. Um, now, okay, so we got a, a little sneak preview here of the new template and the new bits. Uh, but the thing that I wanted to show you is here in this uh, project, I can right click and I can, I should be able to say something with my new gets. Did I, oh, well, oh, it's disabled because I'm running. Okay, okay, there we go. And let's try that again, manage new get packages. And we should be able to find the one that I just mentioned. So that is now the Xamarin Community Toolkit Maui Compat package. And here you can see 17 downloads, 17 people already discovered it um, and are trying it out. So that's awesome. It's probably 15 times me and two other people who actually did it. Um, Make sure to check the little include pre-release box right here um, because else you won't find it because we marked it with um, a little alpha tag right here uh, because it has a couple of rough edges. I will talk a little bit more about that. Um, but you can just click that, install that on your .NET MAUI application and you can see it's a little bit small, I think. Uh, let me see if I can zoom that. Um, you can see that it has the targets for Android and iOS right here. Um, so it will only install for Android and iOS. Actually, I'm not sure if it's going to run then if I'm going to actually um, implement this for only that, but we'll see. And if I go to my main page right now, I'm actually about to show you that little namespace trick right here. So this is XML and S, and here you declare kind of an XML namespace, um, and you can give it a short name. And then we can say here something like toolkit, See, there we go, um, examine.com schemas 2020 toolkit. That's kind of the, the short fancy URL that you can see here also for Maui and, and the, 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 the default XAML bits right here. Um, we also adopted that approach, but it gives some errors in the tooling. I didn't check actually in Visual Studio 2022. Maybe it's solved there. That would be totally amazing. Then we can just keep doing this. Um, and now you can just use all the examine community toolkit bits. Well, almost, almost, but let me, Check this out. Here we go. Just let's um, replace this label with now XCT. And you can see all the stuff that's in the toolkit is popping up here. So we have the avatar view, badge view, camera view, all kinds of things that you are um, used to by now. And let me just show it with the drawing view. Um, so of course, that doesn't have a text property. It also doesn't have a font size. Actually, let's give it a um, height request for now of 200, see if that pops up, there we go. And um, so now a drawing view should pop up, but there's one thing we still need to do because if you remember correctly um, um, from earlier, Dot Maui is now using handlers and this is still using renderers and you can reuse your renderers without any problems in .NET MAUI, but you have to do a little thing. So let me just hop over back to my blog post right here because we described all these things. Um, and here you can see this still uses the old templates. Um, <laughs> it's already old, um, but the, the principle remains the same. You have to call this configure MAUI handlers. Um, and you can do that in, in two different ways, basically. You can register all the handlers that are in the Xamarin Community Toolkit, so you don't have to worry about what control you're using. It will just register all the handlers from that assembly in there. Or you can just take one renderer for the control that you need to probably save a little bit of time of the assembly scanning. I don't know if there's um, much time in there, uh, much performance in there. I didn't really time it, um, but I can imagine that only getting one um, 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 renderer takes less time than getting all the renderers out there. So that's also something that you could do by saying like, hey, I want to have this media element and I just want to register the media element uh, renderer for that. So that's two possible ways to, to do this. Um, let me just take this one and, and register all the handlers here. So I'm going to copy this one. Actually, there's an error in here. Is this, this is kind of like crowd debugging. What's, what's going wrong here, pop quiz? Um, I'm missing the semicolon here, so I'm, I need to add that. Um, so let's go over to our MAUI program. I'm going to show you how to do this in the new situation, although it's not that hard. Um, so here we can say not enable hot reload. Um, configure Maui handlers, that was the one. And I think we have to have 
the handlers in here. And I have some IntelliSense popping up. I don't know what it is exactly. Um, no, I don't want that. So let me just paste this line in here. And now, whenever we start up, it should scan the assembly for this render. It doesn't really matter which render you take here because we're just going to get the assembly in here and it's going to scan all the things. Um, and here you can already see that it starts complaining that uh, if you've been working with like kind of like multi-targeting um, libraries before, you can see that it will now give you some hints about it's available in Android and iOS, but it's not available in Mac Catalyst and uh, the Windows targets. So um, I think just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go into my Solution Explorer and uh, my project file right here. I can right click and I think I can edit a project file. Um, and then I'm just going to remove the Mac Catalyst target from here. And also, this is the one if you're running on Windows. So I'm just going to remove the Windows target from here as well. And now this only targets iOS and Android. And I think this should be much happier. Um, we'll see. I'll just start to run this. And I think then we have everything in place to um, see a drawing view come up. So hopefully, that is actually the case. And my demo gods are in my favor today. So let's just see if this does anything. I see a lot of people happy that Pedro is here um, saying hello. Oh, Tobias is here. Hello, hello. Hola, amigos. Good, good, good. Um, while we're waiting, Javier, did you want to add something? No, yeah, uh, you are totally right. Just removing the targets. The other way, in case anyone just want to do anything, for example, I don't know, register one one compatibility render for Android, other totally different for for iOS. Always can use also compilation directives here. So uh, there are different different ways to achieve the same. But um, yeah, that's that's a good way. That's a good one. Um, I not sure oh so that's because i tried to register a renderer for forms and those are really in like the android namespace and whatever uh, so yeah that's also kind of like a um uh, a question in the chat right now instead of removing the compatibility from the project file can we add a kind of if android yes that's definitely another way of doing this as well if we could just add um, this little compiler directive here if we have a lot of these these days um if Android, you could just wrap it in that, uh, and you can also do uh, or iOS then here, um, and it should, you know, um, then only uh, compile that for Android and, and iOS as well. For some reason, my drawing view is not here. Maybe because I need to do a rebuild that happens as well. That I need to actually clear the cache or whatever. I'm not sure. Well, while well, you rebuild. Let me talk a little bit about, yeah. uh, I see in the chat that people like this new way to add renderers and to register everything. And I'm happy with that feedback because, well, we're doing it in that way for, for different reasons. One of things is like we talked before for to, to have consistency with, you know, other Microsoft frameworks and leave you to reuse knowledge from in case you, you have developed it before with, with other frameworks, etc. But uh, there are other big and important reasons, and it's because we are avoiding to use a simple scanning uh, from .NET MAUI before, you know, you remember that you created some uh, attributes, the, the sport renderer attribute, and you register in that way what classes you want to uh, the Shaman inform search at the startup to see, hey, in this library, there are any sport attributes in here, here in this class. Yeah, in this class, I take it and register by uh, by yourself. So that's nice, was easy, but uh, have some impact in performance use because it was using a simple scanning. So in this way, um, one one of the most important changes is, is that. All right, great. Well, I seem <laughs> to be Are you messing fighting? up completely. Uh, I'm not sure what is going wrong here. Like I said, it's a lot of preview stuff. So maybe I just need to restart my Visual Studio. That might be it. And if that's not it, then we're just going to move on to the next thing uh, because we are not going to look at me struggling here. But this should be um, 
the way to get started with the Maui Compat package. Actually, there's a couple of more things that I need to talk about with that because you can see here that we have to register these renderers like this, um, and that works for controls that actually have renderers, but there are also controls that don't have renderers. Um, that will um, um, also, just like the markup stuff, will use only Xamarin Forms or .NET MAUI components. Um, and they, those don't have renderers. So as soon as you add that to your project right now, it will say like, hey, I can't find any handler, um, which is true because there aren't any handlers for it. There isn't a renderer for it. So um, we still have some work to do to make that um, compatible um, on either the .NET MAUI side or the toolkit side. I don't really know where it's going wrong, but we'll figure that out for you. And then you can use those as well. Um, and I don't know, this build is failing again. So let's just move on. I'm just gonna try one rebuild here. Uh, what was the other thing that I was going to mention? Let me quickly look at my notes here. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of like, oh, so, and there's one more thing. There's one more thing that we ran into with like the colors uh, because the color changed from a struct type to an object type in .NET MAUI. Uh, so everywhere where we were using kind of like the colors, um, um, it gave us a null reference exception uh, because now suddenly a color can be null. And it turns out that kind of like the default values that we were using, the colors were, yeah, the default value and now the default value is suddenly null. So we had to do some fix to actually, um, yeah, check for that color if it's the default value. And if it is, we're now setting it to transparent um, and then everything will go smooth from there. Um, so you didn't have to worry about it. But if you're seeing a no reference exception while using this Maui Compat package right now, um, then it might be worth looking into if you are maybe using a color or if you can set a color to a uh, to a actual value to see if that maybe resolves your issue. Uh, of course, we would still like to know about it so we can fix it on our side, but that should at least maybe unblock you for a little bit as well. It says a rebuild has succeeded. So let me just try this one more time, deploying to my device. Come on, let's do it. And I think that was all the kind of known issues that we have right now. Actually, let me just skip over while we were waiting here. Um, so good to know, non-renderer controls. That was the thing I just mentioned. Um, the shield is one example for that. Markup should just work um, because, you know, it doesn't have any renderers or whatnot. So that should just work. If not, please let us know as well. Um, this is the color thing that I just mentioned. Uh, release schedule, we've talked about that as well. And what is the really great thing is, I think I mentioned that already, is that we're not just doing this, but we're also documenting all the steps that we are doing here. So um, we've been drafting this Maui Compat steps, uh, which is a lot of steps long by now. Um, but what we are doing, so this is very specific to us, right? We create a branch from the latest tag and we do this kind of magic with Git. Um, then we do a little um, automation script for renaming all um, all the things to uh, uh, something new. Then we go renaming all the, the namespaces in there, um, do some magic with the CS proj files. But again, if you're a library maintainer, um, then this can be very helpful to get your library um, compatible with all this stuff as well. So you can see also here, we are doing something with the colors. Um, so there's a lot of information in here as well. Let me just put that in the chat for someone who wants to look at that too. Now, last, oh, I, I see a little bit here at the top. And yes, we have a drawing view. See, so it took a little bit of rebuilding, but uh, here we are using the um, drawing view from the Xamarin Community Toolkit in a .NET MAUI application. Phew, I'm happy that this demo worked out. So let me just say, Hell. Me too, because I have seen it working before, but uh, you like Rails, and probably you are using the latest Visual Studio preview, you are using the latest bits from Maui, you are using the latest bits from everywhere. So, but happy to, to see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. There we go. So, um, all is good. You can see we are making good progress here. I think that was all that I wanted to talk about. Um, so Pedro, maybe you can talk a little bit about open PRs and issues or the app migration, whatever you want to talk about. Sure. So <clears throat> let me share my screen here. Okay. 
so yeah let's move to the prs and issues first so we have this first one came from gustavo oliveira and is to add the add expression property to mac uh, math expression so now you can let's see if i can find a, a test here that it will be show a little bit better how this works so you can type like a expression a math expression and it will magically be solved by our converter here so you know some applications use uh like calculators or stuff like that or need some kind of this uh, feature so we will have this soonish as mentioned by jared uh we have the maui compat steps made by brandon and this is kind of how to do to move your libraries to the dot to the dot net maui and keeping the compatibility stuffs so if you are a library maintainer uh, make sure to check to do to, to look at into it also we have this is a little bit old but i forgot to bring on the for our last community stand up that is the status bar effect and navigation bar effect uh, that we have right now. So you can change the color from the status bars uh, directly on your, on your application and also the, the navigation bar uh, that is like that navigation bar on Android side. So this is a platform specific one and uh, we do not have any kind of screenshot here to show it, but you know, just try that out and let us let us know what you think. Also, uh, instead, uh, we are keeping bringing new stuffs uh, right now, and we also are fixing the existing stuff. So here we can see that Andre is working to get the touch effect even more stable. So we just fix the current execute area on the on the our touch effect. So now we probably can use that directly and we will not uh, overlap with your can execute uh, logic on your application. And also we fix it to uh, issues related to the touch effect and the collection view when we in the pancake view plus talk back as well. So uh, now you can use your accessibility features in pancake view and also collection view with the touch effect. Uh, this will probably be in the next uh, stable version on both the American Community Toolkit and the Compat. I'm not sure if we will release uh, both. Are we? Question mark. Not sure if we are. Sorry. Uh, if we will release the Xamarin Community Toolkit package and also the compatibility package as well, like the both yeah, so will the be just one. Yeah, no, the, 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 so the idea from now is whenever we, it, I'm, I'm not sure if we can do it on the same day because there's some work involved to get the Maui Compat package ready, but the idea is whenever we do a new release of the Xamarin Community Toolkit that we will also release a Maui Compat package with the same features. Great. So yeah, guys, we will have this for Maui and Xamarin Forms, so you can have all these good things everywhere. And talking about the migration, so I spent my Saturday playing with migrating a Xamarin Forms application to the .NET MAUI application. And as you can see here, there is a lot of change to do. Uh, and if you want to take a look on that, you can just uh, go to this PR here and check out on your machine and see and compare with our uh, current uh, our current app for Xamarin Forms and see the things that change there. I did not use the, the migration tooling that Suik is working on that David Turner showed it uh, early today on the .NET MAUI community stand up. But so I do that our using uh, Visual Studio Code and replace feature there. And yeah, that's not the ideal. It's a little bit painful, but that works. Also uh, on that, I could identify some issues that I had and I described it those here. So as you can see here, uh, the we cannot have support yet for resources files. That is if you support the language localization. Uh, so, sorry, if you support the language localization on the application side, uh, we will not be able to build for iOS or Mac Catalyst. That will do uh, some odd issue there. 
Also, since now uh, on the code behind, we are using the source generators on the .NET MAUI, so sometimes the tooling is not yet 100% uh, there to, to us. So sometimes we needed to close our Visual Studio and reopen it again to make sure uh, that changes that you made on the XAML site, one of them is change the namespace there, change it from the, the forms URL to the .NET MAUI URL. Uh, the search generator could get a little bit lost there. So it's just close and open again the Visual Studio. And if you have any kind of view uh, that uses the X type arguments there, like a generic type, as we have on our pop, uh, our pop control, pop up control, uh, the source generator we could generate a wrong, uh, a wrong generic C sharp code. But yeah, don't worry, all this is already filled up on the .NET MAUI repo, uh, and you can uh, get track on those. Uh, on those issues uh, on the .NET repo, and we will probably will have that fixes soonish. So yeah, yeah. The good news about that is the moment yet to do the migration. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, yeah. Very quickly, uh, I think that um, Stefan knows already and is working already in the issue about the uh, yeah, generation code uh, incorrectly and. I will show screen in a few minutes and we'll show the coming code for the content view handler and the content view, you know, all all the, well, not all, but a big part of the uh, Shaman community toolkit controls inherited from content view or from template view are cross-platform controls. And all these controls are using mostly a layout but uh, for now, in all the previews of uh, from from .NET Mau, we are using the compatibility pack to use the content view. So that's mostly all the situation and probably all the rendering issues related with the control template stuff. Uh, now, uh, probably between this week and the beginning of the next week, we will have uh, finally a content view handler with all the control templates migrated to .NET MAUI and using all the new bits uh, probably will be a UK step forward from what we can use now that is use use the compatibility pack to reuse everything in a, in a quickly way. But uh, we are mixing all this stuff with the new layouts and other parts that probably is, is having some uh, incorrect rendering parts somewhere. So yeah, we'll follow that. But uh, that is what mostly is happening now. And the good news is like, uh, probably we will be able to test this with the new bits and new fixes really soon. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Um, so qu really quickly before you continue, Pedro, uh, one thing mm -hmm. that, that came to mind, which is kind of important when you said like, um, are we going to release new versions of the Xamarin Community Toolkit together with the Maui Compat Xamarin Community Toolkit? Um, which is that we are not going to add like big new features um, for um, the Xamarin Community Toolkit now, because that would mean that um, we would have to support it in the Xamarin Community Toolkit, in the Maui Compat, and um, also for the .NET Maui Community Toolkit. So, uh, you know, there's there's also going to be kind of a feature freeze. There's maybe a few small things that we still want to take in there, which you could consider as features. But like the real bigger things, uh, we're we're going to have a a, a break on that of um, really adding those things. Um, also, there is here a question from Steve Grady. Um, do you have a more specific time frame as to when the desktops will be available in Maui Community Toolkit? So then we're talking about the native Maui Community Toolkit, right? The new package. Um, I don't have a timeline for you there yet. Um, I hope it's as easy as just enabling those targets and it will just um, uh, mostly work. I don't know. Maybe you could elaborate a little bit more. Why? Which desktop? So is it Windows? Is it macOS? And are you asking because of the markup or because of something else? Um, so maybe you could put that in the chat, Steve. Um, um, but for the rest, I don't have any concrete dates for you right now. Sorry about that. Um, all right, Pedro, share what you want to share. And then quickly over to Javier to learn more about that content view stuff. Sure. So just to wrap, wrap up, uh, it's normal as 
Javier mentioned it, that we will face some issues because it's still under preview. But if you have time to do this migration, please do it and report uh, to the .NET MAUI team if you see any issue. And please use our uh, community to kit.maui compat. And also let us know if you see any kind of issue I, there. I will share, I will share this uh, sample that you did with the uh, EC that is our teammate that is working now with the content view handler to validate that is working correctly also in, in this case. I think that uh, probably is a very good sample. But uh, yeah, it's normal because I, I found it uh, already when it was creating, for example, the new uh, .NET MAUI gallery. We have a new gallery in .NET MAUI that is using templates here and there. And I detected mostly that uh, with things like margins and padding, mostly I, I found some wrong calculation. So probably it's, it's related with that. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we will we will test it for sure. And now I'm going to share my screen. And um, well, let's talk a little bit about um, upcoming stuff in the .NET MAUI community toolkit. So yeah, as Gerald said at the beginning of uh, the streaming, now we have all this stuff in a separate repo that is in the community toolkit organization. We are very happy to, to be here in this organization because we are now sharing the organization with, uh, for example, the Windows community toolkit. And uh, that's really great. Uh, to, to continue improving and maybe share more more stuff between different frameworks that would be great. I'm really excited about all that. And already we have uh, a big collection of the converters and behaviors that you already use it in the Xamarin Community Toolkit. And now uh, we are adding this in this PR all the effects that uh, we had in the Xamarin Community Toolkit. As I said, I will migrate everything that have sense. There are some things that probably will not have sense. I like, for example, the shadows effect. This is something like we need to discuss a little bit about more about that, but probably will not have sense because you will have already a shadows PR, a shadows functionality in, in .NET MAUI. You will be able to apply a shadow to every view. So probably that will not have sent, but yeah, we, we will we want to try to move the rest because everything that will give some value, it's, it's uh, interesting. And the only big chain compared with Xamarin Forms is, you know, the registration of everything. Because as I said before, we are not longer using uh, the sport attributes that we have in Xamarin Forms to register stuff. And now we use the um, MAUI program and the application host builder. So what we are going to do in the community toolkit is create something like, we are still debating the naming, but the configure community toolkit where you can pass some parameters that will allow you to manage if you want to register, for example, all the effects or not, or you can pass directly uh, uh, something like a configuration, your own configuration, where you set what exactly effect you want to register. You know, to not register everything by, by default and allow you to, to manage what really you need and not spend more time in the start and time of your application than the necessary. So yeah, this PR is just adding, you know, all the effects that uh, we have in, in Xamarin Forms, like for example, the select all text platform effect. And that's great. The other thing that uh, is already in an APR is starting to move all the controls that inherit from content view. We started by layouts. Uh, this is these are the samples are uh, using the new Maui community toolkit namespace, and this is uh, the doc layout. And we have also samples by the hex layout, and here we had the code. And like in the previous case, the interesting thing about that, well, I migrated with a big change. We are still using all the BW properties, all the same methods to override to you know measure and do the correct calls about sizing, positioning of uh, every uh, uh, children inside uh, the layout. And that's great because we can port code really, really easily. 
is like, again, we are using the previous logic, the previous method, the configure community toolkit to register everything in the correct way. So you only need to initialize, register whatever you want, and everything is ready to, to use. And after that, here, this is use a branch in the Maui repository called templated view, where uh, this is uh, creating handlers for content view, templated view, and working with all the stuff that we talked about, for example, all the control templates concept, etc. So he's still working on that. He's um, in a good shape already. So I guess that we will have this release soon. And the idea is as soon as possible, uh, after half this uh, ready in .NET MAUI, we will continue adding PRs, uh, just porting uh, all the content view or templated view controls that we have in uh, the Shopping Community Toolkit, and that keeps some value and continue having sense in the .NET MAUI Community Toolkit. My idea is create one PR by every control, and also, I will create one issue by every control. So if anyone, the creators of that control, so anyone in the community want to pick up someone uh, of uh, these issues, of this uh, work, and want to contribute, we will, we will be more than happy to help you. Maybe it will be a good exercise for someone to learn how to port code, etc. So yeah, we will do it in that way. And that's it, yeah, for probably the, the next month. So for the next release, that's the idea. Have the effects and all the views that uh, are inheriting from content view or template view. And the final goal is migrate the custom renders to handle. So that will be probably the, the final part. And it's mostly because in some case, like for example, with media, I mean, we are also waiting um, upcoming versions from Wing UI also to, to do some, some stuff. So we are leaving that to, to the end, but uh, of course we'll be there. And that's our the progress with the community toolkit. Remember, new repository, new organization, and really soon I think that we will have issues and will be open to anyone that want to contribute. Yeah, absolutely. So last time we already talked a little bit about that there was people who were very enthusiastic and started opening PRs and all kinds of things. Um, so, but like I said, especially for the .NET Maui Community Toolkit, um, we really have to look at what goes in and what goes into which package and how we're actually going to do that. Um, so, you know, we definitely appreciate all the enthusiasm and um, people wanted to jump in and help us uh, because that is really what we need. We can't do it alone. That's why it's the community toolkit. Um, but, you know, please hold off on that a little bit until we say um, go, 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 and you can implement all these things. Uh, we're almost at time. We have seven minutes left. Um, so there are... Um, um, a couple of people in the chat already asking questions. Maybe there are some more questions. Um, so yeah, please, please let us know. Uh, I think I'm actually looking at the schedule here for like the releases and things. And Brandon put in here that in November, um, as it looks like now, we're uh, accepting new proposals and feature requests for um, community toolkit.maui. So that would be great oh but this is kind of like i think what he means here is like actual new proposals so things that are not in the examine community toolkit today um so yeah that um um that might be that and i don't think we have an exact date or things whenever we are going to say like hey help us out with porting all the stuff from the community Xamarin community toolkit to the dot and maui community toolkit uh but you'll you'll hear it here first on the stand up or um you know follow us on twitter our handles are down here or um you know there will be a blog post or um you know where to find us probably and we'll um make it public to the world so I don't know. We still have a few minutes left. Not much questions. So, um, I don't know. Unless... I'm just taking a look to the chat. Well, I noticed that there are people that are, have taken a look to branches in Maui to know what's coming. So that's that's great. And yeah, uh, about dates um, and when to collaborate with the uh, Community Toolkit Maui, I think that the best way to collaborate is porting controls. It's a easy way with small piece. 
And after have this content view stuff, I think that will be a nice moment. So probably, I guess that in some weeks in, the, in this month probably will be the good moment to start doing that. And we will really appreciate any, any kind of collaborations. And I think that we cover all, all the topics. So yeah, we did. making time oh. to see if we have more questions, but- uh, Yeah, not really. I see uh, Juan in the chat is saying, hey, I really want to start collaborating with the repository. Um, I don't know when. So yeah, that's kind of what we've been saying here over and over. Um, I think we're close. We'll announce something um wherever you follow us so uh we're also on um i i must be honest i personally don't check it too often i should check it more we're on a discord server as well i think the link is uh let me just put it in here aka.ms slash dot net discord i think that should get you an invite um, to actually join the discord server and we have a channel there which is now called examine community toolkit uh we shall see if we can get that renamed or maybe get um an, an, a, a new channel next to that uh, but that's where you can find us as well um so be sure to be in touch there um pedro do you have anything to close us off just saying like if you want you want to collaborate with us you can go to the xamarin community to kit uh repo on the xamarin organization look for up for grab issues there and helping us fixing bugs and doing code review as well that will be very helpful yeah absolutely that's a good point because like i said we're not going to take in any big new features but you know we're going to still have releases of the xamarin community toolkit where we fix bugs where we do um, um stability fixes and there will be service releases with that as well so um definitely if you want to help out right now then go to the exam community toolkit and find any issue that you think you can pick up and check with us if that's something that you can do um, if we are not already looking into that or the ones that are labeled up to grabs up for grabs um, you can start with those right away but it, whatever you're going to do just type in the issue that you want to pick it up just so we can check that we're not doing double work because that would be um, not great for for anyone so um, thank you for and if you don't want or that you don't have the time to i don't know to to create some code or to review code we have also uh, the documentation part and you can collaborate okay. in many many different ways so you don't have to spend a lot of time just developing or doing stuff. If, if you want just to write and explain and or, or extend the samples in the documentation, that's perfectly fine. So there are many ways to collaborate and these guys are here used to help you to know if, how to how to do that. Just ping me, ping, ping them and we will try to help you. All right, great. Well, um, I think we are on time here i don't really have anything to talk about so thank you all very much for joining us here another um this month um, um uh, we'll be here again next month so this is the first thursday of every month we'll be here then brandon will be back um hopefully andre will be back as well and uh we will have a lot of contributions for the, the all the two kids basically and we have more news for you so tune in next month thank you so much for joining us this time um, follow us here on this channel please subscribe like this video um, um find us on this twitter handles right here join the discord do all the things um if you're interested in learning more and we'll see you um next time thank you so much Bye bye. Bye bye. This is going to be awkward. Oh, thanks for watching. Here comes the screen. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs> it's not coming. Why is it not coming? Oh, oh, I have to get us out of here. Okay, wait, wait. I can do this. <laughs>